Hi everybody. So uh, last week I showed you one of these Kryptonite uh, KS13 padlocks with its default 5-pin uh, key and knob cylinder. Uh, this week I've converted one of them with a newly arrived uh, Schlage Everest cylinder. Now this cylinder is part of their fairly new come on, uh, their fairly new Everest 29 series, which is the uh, slightly upgraded version from the Everest Classic. And from the outside, there's nothing to really make it obvious that it's the 29 series rather than the Classic, except for the keyway, because uh, Schlage is now using what they call the S family of keyways. Uh, and these apply to both Primus and Everest. And come on, cooperate. There we go. So you can see the design of the key bow is a little bit different. Uh, you now have a hole here. I suspect that that is intended to prevent people from making uh, uh, sidebar defeat tools like people did with the older uh, C series uh, keys, which had a solid shoulder there. And you can see otherwise it's pretty much the same as the Everest that I showed you a while back. So let's see what we can do with this. Uh, now just like last time I have to use a uh, tool to hold that uh, check pin on the sidebar open and this time uh, they've changed the shape of that undercut a little bit so that the Peterson defeat tools don't fit in but if you get a, a thin bit of wire or a small paper clip uh, you can just about get it in there. I actually had to take a file to this and bevel the edges a little bit, but it still fits in there. You push it in. At a certain point you'll feel a little bit of a wall, but if you push it in it drops in even further. And now we've got the uh, check pin out of the way. Come on now. And all we're worrying about now are six uh, nickel pin, uh, nickel plated steel pins. Actually they may be nickel plated brass. I'm not sure. I haven't actually uh, cut one open to see, but let's see what we can do here. So this one I've been practicing on quite a lot while I wait for some more to arrive, and it tends to like to start binding at the back, and this keyway is a little bit tight, so I'm going to be using the uh, still the full uh, width uh, Peterson pry bar and a uh, one of their competition thin picks, and I'm gonna reach in here and should be no, that was pin five. No, pin six is binding. So I think we just set that. Pin five starts up now. Come on, man, focus. Uh, let's see, pin four is still springy. Three is still springy. Still hunting around. So we may have. Overset or underset something. So let's try five again. There we go. Now we've got four binding. That's four set. Uh, three. Uh, let's see. Did we underset something again? No, I think we're okay there. Uh, no, one and two are still springy. So let's try. No, we just lost something there, and, oh wait, now we've got two binding, and as you can see from the key, two is fairly high, so we've got to really reach up there, and now we should, well, two needs a little bit more encouragement, there we go, and now all we have is one, and that's got to go way up, and open. So, that's that uh, opened up, and let's drop the cylinder out. Just like last time, we've got this little blocking plate, and here you can see the hole that the check pin rests in. So if we pop that out, now you can see, focus forming, focus. Come on, man. So 
hopefully you can make that out. That's actually the check pin right there. And when the key or a defeat tool runs in, this little sidebar here uh, will pull that pin in and then the key is able to turn just like normal. So really, if you see Everest, don't be terribly intimidated. As long as you have a paper clip, you can probably, a uh, paper clip and a pair of pliers is all I needed to make this tool. And aside from that, it's just a very, uh, it's just a six pin cylinder with fairly decent workmanship. So uh, the tensioning and feedback is a little uh, tricky to get a hang of, but really there's no reason why if you can pick a decent quality six pin pin tumbler lock, you can't pick an Everest. So until next time, have fun and happy picking.